working on podcasts and chill, and they were like, oh, the Africans. I was like, yeah. But when you have like six, seven jobs, how much money are you making, bro? Not, a like, not that much. Surely that, like, for, bro. You know, America is the best thing that they do in the world is they're the best marketers in the world. Yeah. Oh, they're yeah. They're the greatest. And, and you're going to that. That's kind of like where all, like, the porn offices are. And studios. Oh, yeah, 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 it's, yeah, it's, it's there, man. Right? Like the, <laughs> yeah, we got to go it's there. Cheaper, yeah. It's cheaper. Yeah, you're like, no, exactly. You're on the wrong side of the that's money. Terrible. Yeah. Like, you, you put a coffee in my hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, you know, Why am I yeah. <laughs> Too much expectation on the guy, but did Barack Obama's presidency do anything for black people in any way? So when you see like a Tyler, Black Coffee, Trevor Noah, like, are you like... Where I mean, they come from? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which Africa are they from? I think that's curious. Because they look fat. Oh, no. We're still coming at you live in yeah. LA. So Panduka is here, Ghost Lady Yo. is here. Whoop, whoop. And today, fortunately, there were no production wars, so it's going to be a good episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Corey. Corey's the guy, right? The, 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 the war guy. He's, someone is Palestine, someone is Israel. Uh, <laughs> but now we're on the same team. We make peace before they even make peace. I'm Palestine. Yeah. Palestine. <laughs> You're Palestine. Yeah, I'm Palestine. I want to be We stand with you, man. Right, right, right. <laughs> Fuck oh. war, right? Oh, yeah, fuck war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's why they had to cease fire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, please welcome also a special guest in the building. Yeah. Denim Rich is a big actor. You've been active for like 20 years, right? Yeah. And wow, you, a long time. The wow. last thing you did is Yellowstone, yeah? Still doing it. Oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I'm going back tomorrow to film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so it's still happening. How so, many seasons of that show have you done? Or how many oh, seasons well, are there? We're at five, so I've done all five. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. So since 2017. Mm. Yeah. So the crazy thing about Denim is that uh, he was born in LA. Yeah. And then he moved to, well, he's in between Botswana and South Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's exciting. I love it. Why, why did you choose to do that, though? There was time for a change. I mean, so dad's from Nigeria. Uh, so the natural fit was everybody thought maybe I would go to Nigeria. Yeah. But I thought maybe there is a different opportunity in Southern Africa. And so I just, you know, I bought a one-way ticket, actually after one of the seasons of Yellowstone. I uh, bought a one-way ticket, um, and the first place that I went to was Botswana. I uh, hung out for a little bit, and I was like, yeah, it's not bad here. It's, it's very relaxing. You know, Botswana, is, you know, it's 2.6 million people, 2.5 million people in the whole country. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's very, very relaxing. I mean, there's more people in one area in Santon than there probably is in the whole country. And, you know, kind of settled in and then kind of branched out from there. And so now I go back and forth between Botswana and SA. Wow, that's beautiful, man. Yeah. And then Corey. So Corey, he owns the podcast studio we're shooting at. We met him the other day. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so you're an engineer, right? I'm an engineer. So yeah, I started off in music and then that wasn't paying me enough money and more people were paying me to do video stuff. And so that's kind of like I made it out to LA and now I do video stuff and yeah. I meet cool people. Yeah. In my day to day. Uh, how many like uh, famous podcasts have you shot? Yeah. I don't know. Tons. Maybe yeah. like like famous. Yeah. Maybe like twenty. That like like larger like. Like who? Millions of plays. I don't know. Stephen A. Smith. Oh, Stephen A. Smith. Yeah. Bunny. Yeah. Uh, wow. Bunny XO. Fucking who else shoots here? Um, how, like Housewives. Fuck, uh, reality stars. Every day. Lakers, oh, everyone man. comes in here. Football players, it's kind of just like it's a you, good location. You, you never, too. you never yeah. know who's coming to work. Yeah, yeah and it's right in Hollywood, yeah, you know, right off the sign, right you know. off the yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good time. Yeah. Did you uh, hear you didn't mention us and we asked? Him I was, we'll see. I was, <laughs> oh, no, oh, no. I was <laughs> about to say. I was, I was trying to give him the space <laughs> to be like, but you guys are definitely, right. the guys. <laughs> and it just <laughs> never came. It just like tapered off to like <laughs> the hills, the freeway, and we're like somewhere in there there'll be this. Yeah. No, we I, never got there. I told some people that yeah, I was yeah, doing yeah, this, yeah, that yeah, I had right, done right, this right, show. Right, yeah. Well, yeah. no, because I. I 
I told some people because I don't I don't pay attention to stuff. You of know? course. I, I, so I never know who I'm talking to or who came in. It kind of makes his job easier. Yeah. yeah. But I told some people I was like, oh, I did. I was working on podcast and chill, and they were like, oh, the Africans. I was like, yeah. 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 That's the reputation. Yeah. The, <laughs> the giant country of Africa. Right. So many people right. over here in the United States think. Right. And and and, and so uh, we wanted to have Corey on the show because <laughs> after we shot our podcast, we started engaging and talking to Corey yeah. and we found out that like there's so many stigmas out there between Africans and Americans yeah, yeah. and we wanted yeah. to squash all that and just have a frank conversation okay. right. so we're like the whole time while we're talking we're like yo this is fucking yeah what are we doing why not have a conversation about it for yeah. example we asked him he's paying about $4,000 oh. um, rent right my rent is $2,000. $2,000. Right. And we're like, dude, do you Let's know see, where, where you, you could get, live? Where you could get that if you're living in SA. Yeah. Bro, that's... And I live in such... A, it's not a shithole, but it's really not the best. How many square feet? Like, Maybe, so I mean, meters. like 900. It's pretty big. So that's big. like... Okay, so 80, like 80 square meters. Yeah. Okay. So it's like a, 2,000? Yeah, it's like How one bedroom. Bedrooms? One. One. One bedroom, Damn. no parking, no in-unit washer, dryer, no stainless steel, <laughs> Damn. no... No, no, not a lot of stuff. No pool, no balcony. Yeah, so just what do you, what do you no, park no, your no, car on? No, 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 on the street. On the oh. street. They just park on the street. Mm -hmm. well, you pay if... another hundred fifty dollars a month for a slot. Gee. Right. And nobody else can park there. It's no, your park. then it's your parking. Oh, spot. then it's your. If you pay, it's if your you parking. pay the hundred fifty dollars, yeah, yeah. you can have the parking spot. Then and it's yours. And and so what if I just pull up? Like I'm here to see. Ticket. My girlfriend and I just popped. No, oh no, pop if it's, it's, if it's in a private paper. spot, you'll get towed. T take it, you'll get towed. You'll get towed. Oh, when yeah. I first, when I was living, so I haven't been back to LA like five years. It's like my first time like being in the valley in this mm. area. Because usually when I come back to the US, I don't go any further than New York. Uh, and that's never come over here. And so I remember when I first, when I was living here in North Hollywood, I didn't have any money, right? Right, and so I would always end up parking on the street, and I always get a ticket because I had expired tags because I couldn't afford mm -hmm. to get my tags on my car. So I just rack up parking tickets, parking tickets, and the parking ticket was like eighty-eight dollars a pop, right? A pop. Yeah. Then they and then double after, after, like, they double five, after like two after, or three weeks. Yeah, and then after a minute, like maybe a month, then they just tow your car, right? And it's like three hundred dollars for the moment they tow your car. Then in the moment that it lands at the towing place where they drop your car off, it's now like four or $500. Whoa. So you have to pay all of your parking ticket fees, oh. right? Plus and then the with it on fees. top, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just so, to get your car just back. Just to get your car back. Mm. Well, you still gotta get the tag. Yes. Right, so <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's insane. And there's a ticket on your shit when you get it back. 100%. There's, a, there's, a, there's definitely a it's a racket. $89 ticket on your It's windshield. a racket. You but how are you surviving like when you didn't have money in North Hollywood? Or is North Hollywood not No, no, fancy? you don't, you don't survive. <laughs> And people hustle, like I think people you, like every, hustle. Everyone, everyone, everyone has like seven jobs. They have seven, eight jobs. Like yeah. it's like you would go. So like the way that I used to do it was, I would go try to like audition for a project during the day, and then you would be a waiter, right? You would mm -hmm. do like waiter. So like there's a famous saying like here, especially back in the day, um, if you were in LA. They would be like, oh, I'm an actor. The first thing that they would say is like, what restaurant do you work at? <laughs> wow. like, that's, like, that's like the thing. Like, it's yeah. just well known that like, bro, everybody here is trying to be an actor. It's not yeah. special. Right. And so you're usually doing that. You try to be a waiter because it's flexible, right? Um, and then before what I was doing, they didn't have Uber. They didn't have any of that stuff. So there's other thing like, like atmosphere acting, like background acting, right? So you know, like you're watching a movie and you see like the people crossing in the background. Extras, yeah. Extras, Extras. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Extras. Okay. Yeah. So then I did that. Right, I did that as well. You're an extra, though. No? Yeah, yeah, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. That was a minute. But everyone used to tell me, you'll never be, like, the moment that I signed on to, like, I don't want to even give them the plug because they fired me. Yeah. Uh, but there's a casting office here. I just want to say casting office is a little bit yeah. too true, but it was, like, a, a place you go be background. Right. They sign you up, and they book you, whatever, and then, you know, they used to tell me, like, you know, if you go and do background, you'll never be a real actor. I'm like, bro, how am I gonna pay my bills? Yeah. Like, actually, what yeah. do you want me to do? Yeah. Like, I'll cross that bridge when I get there. So everybody has these different iterations. You background, you this. Now you can do Uber and Postmates and all these other things, but it's, it's hard. I don't, personally now, I don't know how people can do it out here because the industry is so much smaller now. I, did I don't know how you make they, it. Where they pay you to, like, do surveys and stuff. So you go in and you do like something for Samsung and they ask you questions for an hour okay. and a half. Okay. And like they'll pay you like $125. Whoa, whoa, you go do stuff like that. It's just like, you know, it's just but like, if you're thinking it's like fills, saying, in the, fills in the gap. It feels like it's a lot of money, but out here when you're looking at how much everything costs, 
it doesn't do anything, right? Like if you're right. taking like, mm-hmm. oh, we're mm-hmm. make 500 here. Back, if you put from 500 to Rand or to Pula, you're like, ah, oh, bet, that's a lot. But out here, everything is so expensive. A glass of wine is $22. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, you, true, you guys true, know, true. right? So it's like, when you're doing that back in, in, in SA, you can get a really nice bottle of wine for oh, 22 that's... US dollars. Bro, I bought yeah. a beer for 200 rands. <laughs> you see? I'm like, I'm drinking every single it's drop out of this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm licking <laughs> the shit. You know, <laughs> 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 that's right. Bro, 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 bro. I want all my ran words. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's just it's, it's it's hard. It's really, really challenging. Yeah, but it is what it is. Here's what I wanted to understand, right? You guys say you gotta make about you gotta have like six, seven jobs, right? Mm. Yeah. To make it out here to pay the bills. Mm. But when you have like six, seven jobs, how much money are you making, bro? Not a lot. Like, not that much. Surely that, like, bro. I like mean, it's, like, it's like your six, seven jobs. In LA, I was just doing a, I was just doing a podcast with someone. She said that you need ten thousand dollars a month to live in LA comfortably. Jeez. I think the number is maybe closer to like seven. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, exactly. so let me Fred do. Moon. So there's a survey that was done in California. Um, cause obviously that's the state that we're in where it said that if you make less than $88,000 a year, then you're in poverty. No, oh, no you're in the pot, you're in poverty. So that means like you qualify for like government yeah, subsidies. Support, yeah. You know the bread line. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. but imagine $88,000. In Botswana, in any, almost you're king, bro. virtually anywhere in Africa, anywhere in the, yeah. on the planet, eight thousand dollars. You're, 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 you're like, you're like you king. have your chef, you have your driver. You're okay, like, maybe you're, not a chef. No, you have a chef. I, uh, okay, well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, we got you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Damn, man. Sure, sure, sure. Not a chef. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. No, no chef. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, you know, so it's, it's, so it's hard. It's hard to make money because also the jobs are not like salary jobs, right? These, these are things that you're, you're, you're kind of like an independent contractor for, right? Like, so if you're doing Uber, Uber, you have to go to work all the time in order for them to pay you. You don't get time off, right? So it's like these are independent contracting jobs. So it's really hard, and a lot of them are based on tips, right? So it's really, really hard to make a really strong living. Um, and, you know, if you're in entertainment, you know, the average artist comes out here from anywhere in the world, and I do, you know, all over Africa, I do these master classes teaching on the business of entertainment. Hmm. And I talk about this kind of need where everybody wants to flood into Hollywood, and I've all made the mistake because I used to live in my car. So I know, like, I know all the iterations of Hollywood. And it's like, you know, you come out here, um, let's say you're from SA, there's a lot of SA artists that I know, especially actresses, yeah. that all say like, I wanna, maybe they've done a Netflix show or something like that, they're like, I wanna go to LA. And I'm like, before you go to LA, let's just dominate this market fully. Mm. Because when you go to LA, immediately, you're paying $2,000 for your, uh, 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 your apartment. Right. You have to probably furnish that apartment. You have gas and electricity that you, you have food, to, that car. you have to, Food, if you don't have a car, you're gonna Uber. That's gonna be expensive, like Ubering around, all these uh, all these other things. That's just to be like settled, mm. to put your bag somewhere. Basics. Then you have to sit there and go, now you need to get headshots done. Mm. Now it's like, there's headshot places here that charge you can charge you anywhere from 500 to $800 to get headshots done, mm-hmm. right? Then you have to have a demo reel, right? Like some footage that shows that you're a real person. Who's cutting that demo reel together, Damn. right? Damn. Then you have to have put it somewhere. So then it has there's a platform. So there's all these casting sites. Mm. You have to subscribe for those casting sites. Monthly. Then you have to pay to upload your stuff on those casting sites. This is all monthly things. So and then maybe you have to be in an acting class. You got to go out and network. You have to go out and network. So there's like these are thousands. <laughs> like the, there's this whole thing of like you have to make money. You have to spend money to make money, for sure. which is true. But it's really really hard now in entertainment to like break in. That's why there's so many people that are really flooding to more of the influencers and things, because if you have a camera now, you have a shot, right? Right. In their mind, a camera and a shot, because it's a lot cheaper than having to go through the real, I would say the grind that 
trying to be an actor would actually be. But fuck it, man. I'm still in L.A., bro. I'd rather be broke in L.A., man. No, don't say yeah, that. Yeah, you say that. Don't say <laughs> that. Don't say that. You, you see all these been broke in L.A. Bro, I've been broke in L.A. You don't want to do that, bro. What are you talking about? Don't ever speak. No, you do not. No, okay, no, no, so no, no, this no, ain't the spot to be broke. Yeah, bro. So yeah. We, we, we want to play a game with you guys, right? Yeah, okay. It's a segment we have. It's called Ask an American. It's the first one we're doing. <laughs> okay. And um, we want to ask you guys questions about America just so you guys can give us some more insight. Uh, so I'll start with you, ghost lady. What do you want to ask an American ghost lady? Um, okay, I'd like to ask, with this, first with the uh, question, um, we're talking about, you know, the acting and how people have to just like, work so hard to come up. Do you have guys have an issue this side with the coach casting? Like, is, is that, or is it more that people end up becoming porn stars? Because they're not getting roles. The it's porn stars are making $10,000 a month on the low end. Um, so if someone wants to have me on a casting couch, Gosh. give me a call. No one, no one has offered me. No one has, no one has, no one, no. This is a bag. There's a lot of pretty people in LA. Everyone has a gym membership <laughs> and abs. Everyone in LA has, this is regular. It's, it's a, uh, so. Is, is your mic right, but I feel like yeah, it's a bit it's low. Catching, it's catching the, it's catching the up. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I really want people to hear this. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows, man? This He's is like, you know, you know. Yeah. I am not endorsing the casting. I just don't want people to think because I'm laughing that Denim endorsed it. Yeah. What we will say is this. There, there's, there's certain realities to every industry. Um, you know, I think that it's not necessarily specific to the entertainment industry. I do think the entertainment industry gets the brunt of it because it's still kind of within the vein yeah. of emotion and it's sexualized, right? Yeah. But it's like this almost everywhere in the world. It's in corporate, it's in all these different places. Yeah. But in, I think in Hollywood, in certain iterations of it, I think oftentimes some people come over here um, with not the right understanding of what the industry actually is. And there's a lot of people that take advantage of that, mm -hmm. right? There's a lot of people that will be there to sit there and say like, here's my flyer. Um, I'm gonna come and take photos of you at my studio, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, and yeah, it yeah. will be that. And if you're getting, if you're some maybe new girl coming from anywhere in the world, you know, and they're maybe trying to prove their family wrong back at home. Uh, they have a chip on their shoulder. Oh. They wanna come over here. So you just believe everything. I've been there. I haven't been on a casting couch. Don't get it twisted. I've never been on a casting mm. couch. You have to see me outside. <laughs> uh, but there's a lot of people. And so the sad part is, is like, there's a place in downtown LA called Skid Row, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, one of the largest homeless encampments, probably I would dare to say all in the country, Jeez, right? For sure. And um, a lot of those people are filled with younger people from like 18 to 25, no 27 way. up to 30 yeah. that have come out here because what ends up happening is you come out, you go to a lot of these parties, right? Oh, yeah. hey, we're at this party. Oh, da, da, da. oh, I have a connection to such and such. Da, da, da. Okay, bet. And then all of a sudden they're cutting coke on the, yeah, you know, yeah, on yeah, the yeah. table. Oh, you know, and it's everything just to get in. Yeah. Right? You do that, and all of a sudden, now all of a sudden something is happening, yeah. you get addicted, yeah, and then boom, shit. that's how a lot of them do end up on the other side of the oh. mountain doing porn, mm. right? Because of that. And then the other ones, they just have a kind of a psychotic break because they end up leveraging everything, afraid to go home because they came out here without maybe the support of their family. Yeah. And now they end up, you know, on Skid Row. So it really is for me, because I've been in all the variations, I've lived in my car, I've, I've experienced the whole thing, and I have been scammed so many times like on so many different websites where I really felt like, damn, this is my opportunity. I remember calling my mom, mm. calling my dad and be like, dude, they said I have a great look and a great voice and, and, and. <laughs> and then I remember I pulled up, but maybe in like 2011, I remember I was, uh, I pulled up to this one thing, I was on freaking Craigslist, <laughs> um, where they're like, yeah, we're gonna come and you'll do like a music video, right? But back in the day, like if you were gonna come and do a music video as like a background, they pay like $50 for like nine and a half hours. Damn. Right, like it's absurd, right? Yeah. It's absurdity. Um, but you show up and then you get there and like, okay, cool. Take some photos of you. Okay, now go ahead and take your clothes off. Whoa. And you're like, what? Like, no, no, no. And then I would sit there and I'm like, because I don't know who they are. Maybe they are legitimate, but I just don't want to do that. Mm. I would just pretend like, you know what? I just got to make a phone call real quick. I'll just be right back. 
and then I would just leave and not come back. Damn. Right? So I think it's just sometimes people Wait, what, come what do you out. think was going to happen after you took your clothes? Bro, don't worry about it. I'm not, it would never, it would never happen. Damn. Like, I just, because it's, but there's so many of those things. It's not the whole thing, but you got to know where mm. to go, and you only learn by experience. Yeah. Wow. And, you know, America is the best thing that they do in the world is they're the best marketers in the world. Yeah. Oh, they're yeah. They're the greatest. Yeah. The greatest. You guys know, you're in Africa. Mm. Everybody in Africa, I just want to get to the United States. I'd rather, I'd rather be poor in L.A. than be poor, in, you know, in Soweto, in Mabuneng, mm. right, or in the Cape Town Flats. They'd rather be poor there. You don't want to do that. Because at least, like, even in Botswana, I, you can go all up and down Botswana, you can't find a homeless person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, yeah, you can't true. find a homeless person. Zero. Because there's a family, there's a sense of family and community. Somebody going to take you in. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's not, when you go oh, to Hollywood, here. when Jeez. you go to Hollywood, oh, that's bro, that's just where you're at. Yeah. That sounds like a you issue. You made that decision. Uh, Penduka, what's your ask? Yeah, quick one. But before, you said um, the, the people in the porn industry, you referred to them as on the other side of the mountain. Yeah. Is it like, is that it's the like this. area? It's like or? this. So, like, we're on this side of the mountain, and then, like, Simi Valley would be, like, on that side. On the other side of like, the Like, on yeah. the other side. So, like, you take, like, I think if, I don't know, logistically, if you go up this um, freeway to yeah. the 101 to the 134. You take Kuanga right on up. Yeah. yeah, and you're going to that. That's kind of like where all like the porn offices are. And oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, man. Right? Like the, <laughs> yeah, we gotta go it's there. Cheaper. Yeah. It's, yeah, you're like no, exactly. On the wrong so, side of the that's mountain. Terrible. Yeah, bro. What's the location? What, what time this? did you say that they closed? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's the name of the people I should avoid when I go over there? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's cheaper over in the valley. In the valley, yeah. It's a little bit cheaper. So yeah. like you know, uh, if you can't make it in a Maybe you can make it in the valley. Yeah, Maybe. and it's not that far. It's 15 minutes away. Right. Oh. But it's like being in a whole different world on that side. Can What's you it? tell, like, in on the streets that you are in the porn zone now? Or no, it's not the, the porn zone. It's just the. It's just the. It's a, he's so like, like, yeah, like, yeah, just so when I'm wandering around. Yeah, like, you know, know what I mean. Like, just want to understand it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is there like a Google porn map? Right? Yeah, like, no, there's not that. It's just that on the other side, it's just cheaper, right? The cost of living is a little bit lo like lower. And that doesn't mean it's cheap. Yeah. It just means it's less expensive. Compared. Like, yeah, compared yeah. to like where yeah. you are, because you're yeah. right in the middle of oh. Hollywood. Like you're paying to see that sign every day. You're paying mm. to go to hike up this mountain. On the other side, they don't have those types of views. Yeah. Right. So right. that's just where like their offices are, right? Mm. But they do it all over Love the country. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. it's just that's where their kind of main offices are. Uh, yeah. What's your asking American? Yeah, man. Guys, I'm very like fascinated, right, with your food and the way you guys eat. Do you know the history of where that comes from? Because you'd be having breakfast, you know, like uh, eggs, for example, or chicken, and mm -hmm. then they're gonna want to give you waffles or cream or, or, or pancakes with mm. chicken, which is mm. a weird combination mm. for for us. Mm. You know, where does that strange palate comes from? To uh, all like majority of Americans, is that how you guys eat and enjoy it? I feel like in Europe they do like pastries and like salty shit. Like in breakfast, like it's like it's like donuts and or like whatever their pastries are and like sausage. It's kind of like a similar version. <laughs> but here. you but you Sweet think about it. Worse, but so think about it. Like you know, in SA, like Botswana, they have Moguinha. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the same. It's kind of the same. They just have their that iteration of that is like a waffle, right? Like it's like it's a bread. But it's, it's everything just, is sugar. Everything. <laughs> the whole country is sugar. It's like this right. the whole country. And you guys have it with chicken. In in SA you kinda have absurd. something sweet with chicken. Like no, it's too much. A pastry that's you know. But that's the you have not have you tried the chicken and waffles? No. You should try it. The idea you go. of it is like I No no no, I try like, it. I don't like it. Did you give but... it a shot? It's pretty good. It's Bro, I'm really worried about your mic, man. I think the mic. Um, he's the he's the sound guy. He's the sound guy. Like the whole time, he's like just looking down. Is it like, fine, right, 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 It's right, right, a bit right, right, low, right? Right, right. Oh, it's a bit low. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There we go. All right. So starting the podcast. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't want to run down for you to go. Yes, I just to cut you off. You're uh, saying, yes, yes. You're saying, Corey. Um, chicken and waffles. Chicken and waffles. Go give it a shot. Yeah, because, you know, they got, like, so, they got, like, chicken flavored syrup and, like, yeah. apple flavored uh, waffles. Yeah, yeah, no, because you can have, like, a spicy syrup and an apple waffle. It's pretty cool. Ooh. Try new stuff. Okay. Even the combination the of, of um, I've seen the biscuit. Yeah. And you'd find it, like, for us, it's, it's gone. You know, you have chicken and a scone. Mm. Yes, like yes. As a yeah, no, it's scone, yeah, proper. So it's, so the, it's so yeah, strange. It's, it's, it's strange. Like scones. Like, it's like a scone. Okay. Yeah, so it's like that. But it's just, the, everything here is just too much sugar. The, yeah. the, the U.S. just, it's, everything is sugar. 
right? Like if you go to your grocery store, it's like 90% of your grocery store is just sugar. So it's like, and now you see that in all the iterations, there's this whole thing because it makes so much money, that industry, the sugar industry is a massive industry, mm -hmm. right? And so they just put it in everything. And it's high, obviously it's highly addictive, you know? And so it, we're, a lot of people are very addicted to that. And it's become part of the culture. A lot of the yeah. manufactured food here has a different recipe stateside than it does Anywhere internationally. In the world, yeah. They make yeah. it differently. It's like, it's got more stuff in it. It's, it's, it's okay. It's, it's okay. Yeah, it's still recording. Is that fine? Just leave it. It's good. Yeah, it's still fine. Yeah, it's good. Cool, cool, cool. It's yeah. a friend request. And then, and then I wanted to ask you, um, yeah. uh, fuck, you were talking about what? What are you talking about now? The, the, the fact yeah, that... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I wanted the, to say, do you think they make uh, all this genetically... Modified. Food, because there's so much uh, population and they're just trying to feed everyone, but not doesn't mean it's good. I mean, there's a lot of people here. I mean, I, when it, is it is it let people starve or give them something that we made? Yeah. If that's the if that's the mm. first question, because there's a lot of food insecurity is very a thing here as well. So is food waste, um, where a lot of people throw out probably like a third of their groceries, something like that. Like the third of the things that they buy in the grocery store go straight to the trash here. Mm. And then also, I think one in five kids does not have the food they need here. Mm. So like that. Yeah, that's a that's if a, there's so much wastage, then why aren't people giving away food? Because in America, you can sue anyone for anything. Oh, shit. so if you all if okay, if you have a catering company and you have a bunch of food left over from the event and you have the staff take the food home, but then the food gets one of the kids or the staff people sick, they can sue the they can sue the company for giving them the food. Whoa. And because yeah. of that liability, they just don't mm. and they throw okay, it off. If if wow. I am able to can't I give away food to like a homeless person, will that homeless person probably sue me if they are sick? They don't have the they don't have probably maybe the resources, resources to oh. sue you. But like in like a in like a in like a more like the United States is a corporation, yeah. right? And mm. so the whole pur purpose of a corporation is to make money, yes, right? And you have shareholders of a corporation, right? And those shareholders have investments. And they have to make quarterly profits. And so you have an incentive <clears throat> to make sure that they're getting quarterly returns all the time. You're so right, bro, because so, when you watch the ads, it's all pharmaceutical stuff. It's like, a, so right. it's so, so you just, so wow. you, you get to a place, I think, I mean, for me, you know, it's, there's a difference of me, you know, having grown up here, hey, but like living sure, sure, back sure. in Africa and sure, now sure. going on my fourth year of living there full time. And having a, a, a much different perspective of the way that things are, and I feel much more comfortable over there. That's why you asked me before, do I have any regrets? I'm like, absolutely not. I wish I did earlier. Yeah. Um, but there's, a, there's certain realities that I think is hard. Is like a lot of America is predicated on keeping people in a certain place, mm -hmm. right? So there's it's like keeping people in the state of addiction. Because when you're when people are constantly addicted, you can keep selling them on something, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So if we look at any industry, social media, people are addicted to Instagram, they're 100%. addicted to TikTok, yeah. they're addicted to this. They're addicted to waking up in the morning and putting sugary creamer in their coffee, mm -hmm. right? And so what you do is if you do, if you do it long enough, Porn. If, well, no, but you know what? No, but it's funny as you're saying it, it, but that's like a real, that's like, yeah. a, real, like, yeah. a, real, that's like yeah. a real thing. Like, yeah. Yeah. Because of that, testosterone levels have can, because that's like, men don't have Ooh. actual real interactions Shit. anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, these are real, like, so as much as you're joking, yeah, 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 yeah. like, that's no cap. That's a no, real, no, no, no cap. like, bass is addicted, addiction for people. Before you continue, she was telling us of a story, one of her girls, <laughs> right, was having a sexual encounter with the guy for the first time, oh, and the yeah. guy said, we need to watch porn. Yeah. For them to wow. continue. And then mm. it dropped, then he had to it change the mood. It was buffering. Yeah, so when it was buffering, it was just... Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 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 It was during load shedding. It was during load shedding. Load shedding. So like, put in buffers in there. We gotta wait. Now we gotta wait three hours. Gotta download the food. Download before you get going. Yeah. Then they'll sell you a pill for that. One hundred percent. Yeah, so so if you look at the value chain, right, and that's the whole thing. It's a value chain of things. Because it's like, if I can get you hung up on one thing, like for an example, if we talk about the, the black woman in America, mm. right? What they're sold constantly on what being beautiful is, right? So they've grown up and they've seen 
figures that don't look like them, mm. hairstyles that don't mm. mimic their hairstyles, magazines that don't acclaim them, Got embrace you. them. Yeah. And so what does that do to the child that wants to be able to feel beautiful, mm. right? And sometimes getting that positive affirmation from your family is just not enough yep. when you're going out into the world and feeling like I'm getting it from 8, 10, 12 hours from everybody else. Yeah. So my parents, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to give me that. Yeah. But they want it for everybody else. So then what ends up happening, they start changing their image and their likeness to try to match other things, but you can never be something more than what you already are. Ooh. Right. Mm. And so the whole society has made hundreds of trillions of dollars on that. Right. Mm, yeah. On the hair care, on the this, on the I mean, look, even in Africa right now, like skin bleaching is a massive thing. Oh, yeah. massive, right? Look bro. at that. I mean, there are women that are literally taking bottles of bleach and putting them in their bottles and soaking their bodies into it that's because insane, they want to be more European, yeah. because yeah. that's what they have the stigma that that's what's beautiful. That's what our men like. That's what all of these. So it's this constant cycle that I think they get even into. Even the, the, the BBLs, I've never understood that. Like, why an African woman would want it's just a, BBL? It's, it's ridiculous. Because, yeah, it's, it's It's already there. Yeah. 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 No, because the, the uh, well, okay, some some women are built different. Yeah. Like, some, like those African, I be seeing them African asses. <laughs> they don't build them like that over here. They're yeah. not, they, they don't come like, like that out the box. They're in a manufacturing shop. Yeah. And they, they, yeah. see them, they see in the asses on Instagram, they're like, damn, I want one of those. And so you could buy one. Dr. Yeah. Miami will get you one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but again, no, that's but, money. But, but you know? we, we so used to ass in Africa, like right. in not, SA, right? that this whole BBL thing makes no sense to me because you're, it's God-given. It's like... The ashes really, everywhere. Yes, yeah, it's it's natural. Just, it's, it's yeah, but there's a way there. more ass in Africa than there is here. Way yeah. more ass. No, no, my question is for the, the African girls, why they would want a BBL. I mean, well, the, I'll, I'll are you saying American. the African girls or the black girls? The African girls. Because yeah, the, so. the, 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 the diaspora is large. So like uh, those, those African asses, when I say African, I mean Af the, the asses from Africa. <laughs> Right? Those asses are not the same as the asses from, you know, the Bronx. Yeah. They're not the same as the asses from, you know, Miami, from Chicago. Yeah. It's a little different. Mm. And they see in, they see in those African asses on Instagram. Those those IG asses is getting over Wait, there. so the BBL is because they're seeing those asses. Yes, they're trying to get but, that but if you, ass. But if that's you see, the shape they're going. Like, but the African women want that ass. But the, oh, it, man, but, this but, is but, confusing. But, but it's, I, I think it's, but again, I think it's, it's all based on perspective, right? Like, it's this perception that if I have that, then that makes up, means I'm going to be successful, yeah. right? Oh, so yeah. they see what people view as success, and they say, like, oh, because they did that, because that's... Maybe, okay, there's this guy, he just booked a movie, and then you see him get a six-pack. And then in your mind, you think, oh, it has nothing to do with the fact of his hustle, his grind, his talent, his yeah. work ethic. It's because he has a six-pack. So maybe if I go get a six-pack, oh. I'll somehow go and do that. And I don't know that that's the right way to do it. Cardi B did not get her number one single till she fixed them fucking teeth. Okay? <laughs> that's when, that's when, that's, that's when, that's when oh, she got her. Oh. That's, when, that's when her shit went up when she fixed that grill. Yep. There's something to the cause. But not saying, you know, not saying, well, no, it's, but it's, do it's, something. But it's, but like, it's part of the industry, right? Yeah. That's the thing. It's like, Jeez, again, it's man. part of the industry where it's like, you can, you have to figure out what position you want to play in this game of the so entertainment then, industry. So then is someone like Tyler and Anomaly, because she didn't do anything to her body. Like, Tyler. she's just natural. Yeah, yeah she's natural. That's why she's winning, because she's got the African ass and she's over here. And that's why she's going up, 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 mm. up, up, up. That's what they. That's what they want. But she's got the. That's the. That's the. That's the body type. As far as like the all the plastic surgery, it's that. That's the body type. They're going for the African women. Mm. That's the body they want. The oh, ones, the, the people over here, the white women over here want that body type. Everybody, that's the body type that's in right now. Yeah. But isn't the Zimpic thing on? Like, isn't it popping now? Isn't yeah, that but that's for like trying to get from like very big to like not so big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's like trying to go from like Oprah to like skinnier Oprah, whatever. Oh yeah. But African girls are started <laughs> you know? doing that. Have yeah, they? Yeah, it's becoming that, a thing. Oh, so yeah, Zimpic. Like I said, like, <laughs> oh, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever America does, our ladies mimic it. It's because marketing. Yeah. The marketing. The marketing is so 
aggressive. It's crazy. And so it's like when you're sitting at home and if that's all you're doing is looking at reality television, Instagram, and seeing what you believe to be celebrities, you have no idea how they even became. And no one can really even identify what a celebrity is. You just say celebrity yeah. and think that it's this all-encompassing thing. And there's so many iterations of what that is. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Like if you yeah. say you're somebody's an influencer, what are you influencing? Yeah. Like yeah. so it's like a lot of these things have become very saturated. Yeah. But the problem is when they're just being fed that all day long. And they don't see anything. Like, if you look at a lot of countries, especially on the continent, the problem is, is, like, they see a lot of stuff online. They see action, opportunities. That's what they think. They see busyness. And then they go outside, and sometimes their downtown or CBD area doesn't reflect what they're seeing on their social media, rather be in New York or mm, Europe mm, or Paris. Mm, so sure. they just want to feel like there's a part of that that they're able to hold on to, yeah. right? And that's oftentimes where, for like, for myself, I feel like, that's the, uh, the unsettling thing, I think, is because then you get the young African child that feels as though they need to change their name, image, likeness, everything, and leave the continent to go and find opportunities somewhere else, but they're never going to be accepted where they are. Yeah. Right? So wherever they're going to go to try to fit in, it doesn't, it doesn't work, mm. right? So I think it's just marketing, and I think sure. you don't have the lack, you have the, not the, the understanding of how marketing works, and that's the reason why you end up falling a victim to it. Is there the same chance of opportunity for success, up economic, upward mobility, whatever, in SA as there is in LA? Yeah. As a, as 100%. 100%. Yeah. I, I, for me personally, I would say even more so. Yeah. Like, because and it's relative to what you want as well. It's relative sure. to what yeah. you want. But if, for, I mean, for me, and you obviously guys will speak, you had grew up there. The difference of it is in like, in SA is like, it's not an anomaly to walk into a space and see everybody that looks like you, mm. right? That sure. corporates, executives, all these other things. And so there's certain things here in the US that you're always fighting against. Um, that you don't have to do over there. But mm. also economically, there's so much opportunity there that it's like, they need that. They need, like, I mean, how many people, it's like the amount of land that's in South Africa, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Like yeah. the amount of opportunities, the op like, I mean, there's new things new popping up all the time, right? And so it's like, and the, the cost of living or what it costs to live in a place like Los Angeles, like that same girl that you're saying that said, I feel like I need $10,000 to live com comfortably in L LA. Right. If you took ten thousand US dollars a month in South Africa, yes, bro, I don't even. But are you gonna? You, but it, it doesn't. It's, it costs a different thing to live here. So if in South Africa it costs a lot less to do everything, that's great. And yeah. All, but it sounds like the income is also less. That's that. It would go hand in hand. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's also yeah. relative, it's also yeah. relative to what you do, though. No, no, no. Because he's, if he's, you're doing if you're doing the everyday job, of course, one hundred percent, because right. you're getting paid in rand, and that doesn't convert. No, no, no. But right? he, he's right though, because even with us, we have the biggest podcast in Africa. Right. right, but we don't make the same amount if we were American and had the same numbers. Oh, oh my we'd God, be making we'd ten times more yeah. Yeah. because of the CPM. Because, because they, they right. right, and that's the problem. Yeah. And, and that's think, across yeah. all. That's across all yeah. you know, industries. That's 100%. Not, that's not, right, that's and, not and, just, and that's uh, the thing. Is like that's why I was saying. I think depending on what industry, like for instance, if you're in agriculture, you're doing import export. Sure, that's different because you can set the price. Like I'm going to get paid in USD. I'm going to get paid in euro. I'm going to get paid in pound. But if you're more localized, right, a coffee shop and this, that, and the third, that's what you're getting paid. You're getting right. paid. You're getting paid in rand. So I think it just depends on what you want. But I personally look at like your quality of life, mm. right? Co For me, that's important. Even coming from New York to Los Angeles, I made, if I was bartending, making seventy thousand dollars a year. Yeah. I came here and it was like a hundred and five to do the same job Shit. Right. at the same. And that's from New York to here. Mm. Right. Oh. Like, so, like, I imagine that the difference between, like, here and, 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 and it's, it's, it's massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's massive. Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't imagine that they're, like, you know what it's I mean? Massive. Yeah, um, insane. My question is, why are you guys so rude? Like, you like guys... all of America? Yeah, like, there's no Ubuntu. Like, you could go up to someone no, no, and say, like, Ubuntu. hi. Ubuntu, isn't that an operator or something? <laughs> it is. Ubuntu. Mark Shepard. Right? That is an operator, right? It is. It's right. It's an operating system, man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, technically, yeah, it is an operating system, <laughs> but it's for people. It's a, like Ubuntu is like a, like a, it's yeah. like a, it's humanity. The, it's, a, the, it's the Bantu. It's the community of, it's like the us. I think Lennox Ubuntu is a is, a, is an operating <laughs> right. system. Right. 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 But, but your right. ancestors right. created right. Ubuntu. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, you could you could say hi to an American yeah. and they wouldn't say hi back to you. Yeah. And it's so crazy. It because... depends on where you are in America. Okay. So like if you're in like, okay, so the East Coast is a little very is very direct. 
The South is very hospitable. The Midwest is very affable. And the West Coast is none of those things. Mm. Um, but like, so it depends on where you are. Like, you know, in the South, they'll, they'll say hi back to you. In the Midwest, they'll also say hi back to you. Mm. Because it would be weird there to not. Because what I'm ah. saying is it'll be impossible for an African person to walk in now right. with all these people here and not greet everyone. Mm. Like, it's rude. Hi, it'd be rude. Yeah, it'd be rude. Yeah, rude. Yeah, and here in America, a person can just walk in and, and just chill. You know, so, <laughs> like, for example, like, so, and still example, no pressure. Hood, do you guys, like, let's say on Christmas or on Thanksgiving or whatever holiday, right. can like someone just come into your, your, your yard in a nice manner and ask for food in Africa you'd give them if it's like Christmas you know they'll come no, only Christmas is, yeah. I mean Would that happen in America even in the hood if someone came to my door on Christmas and asked for a plate of food <laughs> I'd give it to them but no one would do that. Yeah, but it's yeah. not an American thing. It's not thing. an American yeah. thing. No, no, no. It's, oh, it's an African thing as well. I mean, what would you do? Oh, it's only Christmas. <laughs> okay. It happens. It's like, no, no, solid it's right. Christmas. Yeah. Uh, okay, he's from the, like, the, the, the perm. So <laughs> I'm from the okay. perm. Where are you from? So he's surprised. <laughs> he's surprised. That's the thing in South Africa. Right. Where are you, Christmas where, where'd you thing, go? Thing, man. Uh, in Venda. Okay, where'd you no, go? No, he didn't grow up in Venda. He's from Park Town. No, no, he grew up in Park Town. Oh, okay. In Venda, they do that. In Venda, they do that. Yeah, like yeah, the guys he's living pick well. up, he's basically good. the guys would pick up the trash. Yeah. If okay. they come and it's a day after Christmas, they'll like give them like yeah, leftovers. Yeah, 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 give them yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, but I understand sure. what he's saying. So, for example, in 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 anywhere in, in, in South Africa, if there's a funeral, a black funeral, yeah. right. like it's for the whole everybody community. Eats. Anyway. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. yeah. Everybody eats. That's like that here, kind of. That's kind of that's that's similar, depending on where it is for black people. Not really in America. Yeah, 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 it's for black people. For black people here, that is more of a thing. So if there's a funeral in the hood, like the whole hood is eating there. Oh, yeah, depending on whose funeral it was. But like if you were someone who was a member of the community and people knew in the community, the community could pop up to the funeral. I got you. For sure. All right, cool. Let's move on to our CEO. CEO, what do you want to ask an American? Bala. Um, Yeah, I think my question is a little bit more specific to like opportunities, right? Okay. So one thing I've realized is um, black people in America, like, or rather, when we look at the American dream, right, and what we know of it, right, mm -hmm. that this is the land of opportunity. So a lot of black people t tend to chase opportunities and entertainment. And I read somewhere that as a rapper, or rather as, a, as an individual, you have a higher chance of being an astronaut than being a, a, a successful rap because there's so many people chasing wow, the same thing. Wow, right? yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, the same goes with acting mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to opportunities in the American dream, um, why is it that black people aren't playing in like certain industries? Um, like, you know, when you look at agriculture and how people are successful there and people are successful <clears throat> in technology and people are successful in finance, why do we not see African Americans succeeding in those spaces. I think uh, it's representation. Oh yeah, I don't. I don't know how deep you guys want me to go. With Let's that. go, Let's go, deep, bro. Go, 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 deep, bro. Deep, bro. Deep, bro. You're deep. asking. You're asking. You're, you're asking a question that's in my. That's this is my. This is my purview. Uh, uh, so this is so my thing, but I'll let you let's go. Grab a beer I'll, I'll, do, I'll do my yeah, quick version. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's fine. No, I just no, say, no. I just or, chop it a bit. This is a question that's like, oh, I think it's a big thing about representation. So if you don't see yourself. In the, if you don't see you, all the astronauts stateside, you know, growing up, they were all white dudes. All the, all the, most of the doctors were white dudes. All the presidents were white dudes. Mm. All the, you know, if you don't see yourself in this setup, you don't envision yourself being able to do this. Mm. Who I saw growing up were rappers mm. and actors, NBA players. NBA players. That was who I saw. True. So I would imagine that it's just a, that, that it's really about who it is that you can see. When like Black Panther came out, so when true. um when that, what was the animated Spider-Man movie came out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was watching these movies and I was with like Thank kids. You. And the only reason I didn't break down crying is because I was with kids. Because I was I was like, wow, these kids are, they, they see like, oh, oh, they can see Spider-Man. They can see themselves being this. They can oh, be yeah. a superhero. And these kids don't see what that's doing for them. But growing up without it mm. and seeing the kids and like what like the, the representation, mm. like, you know, you can be anything, you can mm. do anything, you know, mm. I, I would argue that that's why, mm. that it's, it's the lack so it's of what you can see. Some sort of conditioning. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, it's the, you have to look at the history of yeah. African-Americans, right? So you arrive, so based on our education system, it's, it's, I almost liken 
African American kind of education system to like the Bantu education system, right? Where it was like it was there, but then it was like you used a name, it was supposed to be great, didn't help teach anything. Mm. Where you're looking at it and you're going, when our first our first understanding of where a black person comes from was on a slave ship. It wasn't from Africa, it was just you kind of appeared and you appeared on these ships and you were slaves. Then you got to this United States where you're working and you're building and some guy came who was a president and said, we're gonna free you, but you can't read, you can't do anything, you have no money, you have no opportunities. And so then you end up having to stay on those plantations as essentially an indentured servant, right? But what we always were, we were always physical beings and we were always very musical, right? And that is oftentimes how we were able to kind of serenade ourselves and keep ourselves very relaxed, right? So it was the physicality and the musicality that really was able to kind of keep us endured that for all those years. Then what happened was when you started to actually see prominent figures that were maybe attorneys, were maybe getting more into the political arenas and things like that that had opinions, they got assassinated. Oh. So what happens is is that when you, as the young child, start to see, hey, you want to have an opinion, maybe you want to be uh, Patrice Lumumba, maybe mm. Thomas Sankara, maybe you want to be a Stephen Biko, right? Maybe you want to do that, but then they're going to take you out because of that. But then they show this kind of safe route of music mm. and sports Acting. and entertainment. That's something we could always do. That was, that's, oh, that's in our DNA to be able to do that. And there's a system that we can live in and, and, and survive in. So it just became this kind of almost natural progression. And then, like you said, then representation-wise, you don't see anything mm. that says that. Then we had a thing here um, called, which was like was Tulsa, right? Which Black is the Wall uh, Black Wall Street in, Tul in Tulsa, Oklahoma, which was an all-black-owned community. Uh, mm -hmm. Remember banks. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the whole thing. Yeah, then yeah. That beautiful. Thing, that thing got firebombed. Yeah, right. Destroyed. Why did it get firebombed? Yeah. Because there's billions of dollars circulating within yeah. the community. They don't want that. They're like, uh, this dollar doesn't leave this yeah. community. That's kind of a problem. Mm. It doesn't really sit well with us. And then it doesn't exist. So when you're doing that, you have to ask yourself, that was way, that was 60, 70, 80 years ago, and we still can't re seem to like rebuild that, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And you still can't rebuild. If you look at what, in, in New York City, uh, uh, Central Park used to be a place called Seneca Village, right? That was in all, another black neighborhood in New York City, mm -hmm. right? That then they claimed redlining on, which pretty much said that, hey, you guys don't actually have any rights to live here. They took everything away, plowed over it, and now they made it a park. Mm. So you, you, you look at a Diddy situation. He wants to buy BET. They're like, nah. We well, never well, Diddy that. don't need to be buying shit. <laughs> well, you know, realistically. You're, no, no, but I think what it's <laughs> trying to say is like it's a different <laughs> awesome. They just bought, they bombed him. You have, yeah. you, you have, well, here's the thing. With entertainment, with all these different mediums, I think you always have to be, you just have to be very mindful. I think the hard part with entertainment is we, the way that I look at things is, there's certain things that you just don't say. There's certain things you don't announce. You just do, mm. right? Because sometimes, like some of our leaders that we really love and cherish that were assassinated too early never got to do the job, right? They were talking about what they wanted to do, uh, but it never happened. Uh, and so it's like if they see you coming, you're going to get stopped. But Kanye West did do it, though. But you have to figure out what is it, what is the do? And I think that's the, the question for a lot of people. It doesn't matter, I'm not even talking about Kanye. I think just in general, what is the do? Is the do saying we want to own banks? Or we, is the do saying we want to own land mm. like it is? And, you know, of course, like the big thing in South Africa is we want land. And then other yeah. people on the other side is, well, what are you going to do with do the land? land? It's like, yeah. well, bro, that's not your response. Don't ask me about land that's mine. And then it's like you stealing my car. I want it back. <laughs> and then you ask me, where are you going to drive it? <laughs> like, bro, don't worry about it. Like, yeah, yeah. I'll figure it out. Yeah. But so there's a lot of these different iterations that I think are very, very tough. And I think that we're in a place right now, especially in 2024, where you're like trying to thrive, heal, get reparations in some way. When I say reparations, I don't mean monetarily reparations. I mean acknowledgement that things happened, right? And I think I like monetary reparations. <laughs> Look, I do too, but I just feel like I just but I just feel like that's a, I just feel like that's something that's never gonna happen. And I wish that we would just spend our energy acknowledging the fact that we're never gonna get reparations and focus our energy on things that are actionable. 
<laughs> well, because if you look at it, the African American community in the United States are two point two trillion dollar consumers. Jeez. So it's not like there's no money mm. right. in the African American community. Yeah. So two point two trillion dollars. That's a lot of money, man. I mean, that's almost larger than the whole GDP of Africa. Yeah. You understand? So when you're looking at that from that perspective, that there is real buying power, right? But it's just about sometimes access to the information. It's not about being stupid. It's just sometimes you don't have the access to the information or the know with how of how to even access that information. I also think a big driver in decisions, you know, being so dis disenfranchised for so long, people are trying to make money. And realistically, those are massive economic drivers. Mm. Those NFL players, those rappers, those, those, those uh, these influencers, they're, they're paying for their families. They're bringing in actual money. They're bringing in actual, like, changing the generational path um, quickly. And so, like, I think, so it's like, yeah, I could go be, you know. A lawyer. I could go be a lawyer and make $140,000 a year. Be paying off student loan debt for the next 15 years, right. Or I could go be, you know, Jay-Z and mm. then turn into, like, Jay-Z. Mm. Or be Rihanna and turn into Rihanna. Mm. Or, you know what I mean? Like, there's, you know, the. But it's hard because I think the KPI, like, I remember when I was, like, 11 or 12, I remember in the classroom, they sat around, they asked everybody what you wanted to be. Mm. And everybody's like, you know, I want to be a law lawyer, doctor. Mm -hmm. And that got to me, and I wanted to be a basketball player. Mm -hmm. Like, that was my thing. Like, I love basketball. Mm -hmm. And the teacher stopped the whole class, erased the board, and did a whole data analytics of why I would never be Whoa, a basketball player. Oh, that's crazy. Right? And it was like, statistically mm -hmm. speaking, da 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 da, 0.6%. And out of 10,000 kids that go to college, only 100 of them get in the NBA. And out of those 100, only five of them will start and make money. So do you, it's like as an 11 year old, do you really feel like you're that? And you're like, I don't know, I just want to be a basketball player. Right? right? Like, well, but she was right in a way, because you're well, right to know. Well, the interesting thing is for me, I would actually say that she, I think that there's a yes and a no, but I think that the hardest part about it is there's nothing wrong with pursuing entertainment, but I think that sometimes you're, a lot of people are misguided on the, inner, the, the understanding of what entertainment is mm. and how you actually become an artist. I think a lot of times it just th people think like, all I have to do is have a phone and I can be an influencer. All I have to do is have access to a studio and I can create bangers, right? And then I will be a Jay-Z. Sure. There's a massive ecosystem that goes, there's a massive industry of delusion that goes mm. on that a lot of people don't even understand about how to how to make things happen you it's, know i think it's because there's no barriers of entry right. unlike with a lawyer or a doctor you know, I know what you have to do you know what to do i need this degree i'm going to study for 10 years yep. but with the rapper you know switch on the mic and the laptop soundcloud i'm a rapper you know what and i mean and you don't know in a lot of people there's a difference between good and great and there's you have to be special and you know the world doesn't create a lot of special you know, it creates a lot of really good, right? And there's nothing wrong with good. But there's a lot of people that are chasing something, but they don't, like the entertainment industry, if you look at it like 25 years ago, 30 years ago, there actually was a formula mm -hmm. of how you could yeah, be an actor, yeah, 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 yeah. right? It was like, you knew that if you came out to LA, mm -hmm. you had to go get get a headshot, right? Mm -hmm. You had to get a headshot. Costing agency. You had to get an agent, right? Mm -hmm. You had to get yeah. an agent. And then at least you knew you had a shot. Mm -hmm. Like at least you knew, and then you maybe get into an acting class, but then it just becomes a game of numbers. Right. As many auditions as I get to, eventually I gotta book one. Yeah. Right? Like I can slip and fall and book something. If you give me a thousand, I gotta be able to book five. Mm. Right? Now you have to have a different understanding of what entertainment is. You can't be what we call a one trick pony, mm. meaning you can't just be an actor. Okay. Right? You can't just be an a artist, rapper. Yeah. a rapper. What are your investments, right? Are you interested in fintech? What are you? What do you care about? What is? What's happening? Are you opinion? Do you have opinions? Mm. I don't personally like that, but that doesn't matter what I like. That's the industry that we're in. So as a business, I believe that you have to be two things. You have, you can't be rigid, and you always have to be innovative. Mm. And there's a lot of people that are getting very rigid and saying, "I want it to be like this." And it's not that. Mm. You have to be a business person. So you have to know what the barriers of entry are. Because when somebody makes money, let's say they make $10,000, where is that $10,000 going? Yeah. Right? <clears throat> are you investing it into something? Are you using it to start your own business? Are you reinvesting that money into, into the, the business, business that you're already <clears throat> growing? <clears throat> or are you using that money because you want to go buy Ace of Spades or whatever and turn up for the, for the gram when that ultimately doesn't do anything? Mm. So there's this whole iteration of the ecosystem of entertainment that a lot of people just don't understand and you won't know until you're actually doing it. That's crazy, wow, man. Simpiwe, can you grab the mic? What do you want to ask in America? Simpiwe! Simpiwe. Oh, he's already answered? Okay, cool. Shots, you got a question? Yeah. 
So, uh, Simpu is our sound guy. What's up, But bro? he said he already answered. What question did he answer, by the way? Yeah. Oh, the rudeness part. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's very strange for us, bro. Sorry. Like, I've said hi to like 10 people. None of them have said hi back. It's like, yeah, nothing, do bro. I smell? Is it the when I first When I on? first moved to Botswana, <laughs> I had a very like straightforward mindset. You know, in the Botswana, it's very much like the hey. yeah. And so like, I would walk in and be like, okay, hey, so I need this, this, and this. And be like, ah. Hey. And they'd be like, That's bad. Hey. And I'm like, Okay, now, let's get, okay, now, all right, we got, we good, we got the pleasantries, all right, man, let's get to this. So that is, it does take, it does take a little bit of time yeah. for us to kind of thaw out a little bit because we're very, like, I, I gotta get things done. Hey, <laughs> Shots? Um, I wanna know about the women, man. So, the women are, like, a bit, like, like, everyone is angry. Corey can't hear you, bro. See, this I is mean, why you fight with Corey. You, you guys, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, man, like, why, why are the women so angry, bro? Like, the women are so angry. And f- the, the weird thing is, like, the the we, we, we went to this restaurant, and, like, all these restaurants, all the women are friendly, right? And they waitresses, and they're friendly. And I get that. It's service, right? But when you go on the streets... Woman, it's like, yo, man, these people are angry. You say hi, they're like, yo, what's up with you? Like, mm. I don't know, man. Like, why are they so angry? Uh, okay. Uh, I don't know about uh, SA or other places, but here, chivalry is a little dead. Ooh. Um, so a lot of the women that I know spend a lot of time having to support themselves and take care of themselves. And so, like, uh, if you don't want to, like, like, it seems like the women I know, they want to, they take, because they have to take care of themselves, they don't want to also take care of you. Mm-hmm. So because, like, a lot of men don't come, at mm-hmm. least this is, the, this, is what, this is the take I'm getting mm-hmm. from the women in my life. Mm-hmm. If you come to, if you come and you don't have, you don't want, you don't bring anything to the table, you're just like a son. Mm. So I don't want a son. Mm. But what's that going to do with, hi, how are you? What's your name? Well, I get it. But like, it's, instead it's just like, well, you're just another one who wants to be a son. Next. Mm. Oh, that's you know what what's I mean? up. So what, you got you to gotta like show your bank account like when you say hi? Or like... Well, I think like, I think like it's just the, I think it maybe it's a, a, maybe a little, you need a little bit more swag. You can't, <laughs> you can't just, so you, can you, you, like you can provide it. You lack yeah, swag, you like, Sean. You know, <laughs> You know, because I don't think like they're just like, they're like, nah, fuck you. I think they're more like, you know, you're just not interested. So, like, <laughs> you're, Damn, you're bro. To, uh, work you on your pickup line. No, no, no. I, I wanted to add on to the question he was asking because he said the ladies who work in restaurants, they seem to be kind. But I think it's because of the tipping culture here, yeah, man. Like, oh, of course. You got to tip for everything. Like, everywhere there's like, everybody's expecting a tip. And yeah. when you and don't tip, change it. Yo! Yo! I didn't tip the barman at the restaurant, right? Because I wanted dash and like four cans of water. Didn't tip him and we were laughing and we were all good, but up until I chose no tip on the screen, (laughs) the attitude changed, man. It was a massive tipping culture. Where we come from, it's an option, you know what I mean? There's that thing in the more affluent areas where it's expected expected. of you. But everywhere else, you just buy the thing. Yeah, 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 that's it. Like you did it, yeah, get get off. Especially if some jobs are like just, it's your job. It's an exchange, that's what you do. Like that's what you do, do your job. You're getting paid to do your job, yeah. Stop. Yeah, the tipping culture, man. It's, uh, uh, most jobs like they don't have basics, like well, payment, it, uh, it, salaries. It's changing. It used to be that you tipped servers and bartenders, and you tipped maybe like your barber, maybe like the cab driver. You There was not too many setups where you tipped. Now, I think because inflation, everything getting so expensive, people mm-hmm. don't want to raise wages, so they keep their wages shitty and they add a tip option. Mm. So like a lot of employers are not paying their employees mm. enough money and would like you to subsidize that. Mm. Wow. So it comes when from you're a tipping, need. When you're tipping, mm. like, you know, the Domino's guy when mm. you go pick up a pizza. Mm. Right. Like, I just, like, you know, right. I, yeah. you know like, I, 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 like, the, right. like you, you put a coffee in my hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
Yeah, you know. Mama's chippy. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. you ordered this thing, so like he came to your table and laughed such a dry joke, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm fucking picking this thing up, why am I paying for it? Yeah. Right. Even drive throughs I've seen like say, like people complain that drive throughs have tipped <laughs> yeah, them up. Yeah, for real, yeah, drive throughs yeah. they yeah. turn. <laughs> yeah, drive throughs you got it like there's a tipping option. That's like a post-COVID thing. It's newer. That it's like oh, so, it's, that okay. it's so rampant. It wasn't this bad before. Damn, bro. It's wild. Yeah. I Maybe we should that. start tipping for podcasts, man. Yeah, man. You well, must start that. tipping for podcasts. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. You, it's I, crazy, hey, man. You put, a, you put your cash app at the bottom of the link. I'm sure you, someone will say something What's the it. cash app, bro? Oh, see, okay. So it's, just a li- it's like a link where people can click on it and then just give you money. If you for want. real? Yeah, yeah. Like just... Yeah, yeah just cash like, app, Zell, Venmo. You want to tell her. Oh, you want it. Oh, you want it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah. like you load this money or F&B. Yeah. It's and then like you'll like send it. Yeah, you just put yeah. it in and you send yeah. it. Yeah, you want yeah. it. So just, just throw you, that down at the bottom of your of your, of your, of your descriptions. Yeah. You just, extra money might come in, you know? Yeah. Corey made me do it. Yeah, when I put the link, just remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of uh, South Africans are very upset right now. Like, we're not doing that. Yeah. Just do the podcast and shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Watching, don't do too Be much. grateful. Like, don't, don't do too much. That's <laughs> his ET part. Yeah, this is chill out. <laughs> uh, I want to ask you some questions from chillers of yeah. our audience, right? <laughs> Uh, what is the actual difference between Democrats and Republicans? Mm. Ooh, I just was having this conversation with someone. Okay, the quick version. Republicans, this is the thing I don't understand. This is what I don't like about Republicans. If you are like rich, you own land, you have inheritances, you make lots of money, whatever. I understand the concept of being a Republican. Less taxes, smaller government, less that, that affects you less. Right. But what the Republicans have figured out how to do is like make poor people think that they care about them. Mm. They've somehow figured out a way to make make broke dudes from Ohio. You make twenty two thousand dollars a year. Mm. You make you know, you live in Kentucky, you make eighteen thousand dollars a year. And they somehow have gotten these people to believe that Donald Trump, the billionaire, understands and relates to your experience Mm, and is looking out for you. Mm. That concept is mean to me because there's people who aren't smart enough to understand what they're, they don't understand what they're actually dealing with. So they're voting against their better interests. Mm. If you are rich and you are Republican, I get it. Mm. I I, I get it. Yeah. Um, Democrats are, don't do much. They're just kind of like lazy. Republicans are a lot more effective. <laughs> they're way better at governing. Or like they're way more effective at getting, pushing their agendas across. Democrats just kind of, I don't know what, they show up barely. I still don't understand. So Republicans are the rich white dudes that yeah, have been running the but country. But the Democrats are rich white dudes too. Who are? They're, they're just like the, the, the liberal rich white dudes, essentially. More liberal rich white dudes. Okay. So Democrats are more liberal... Republicans more conservative. conservative. Yeah, that would be the general sort of the to you. fundamental yeah. difference. Explain to me, like in this, like uh, how would you explain it? Uh, it's like, like yeah. ones uh, in, protect the interest of white monopoly capital, then the D- others, yeah, pretty yeah, much, D-A. and then the others are pro uplifting the poor people, yes, pro... That's the Democrats. Not yeah, the pro, yes. pro abortion, right? Yeah, more so. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, Republicans. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Pro, pro, uh, uh, no abortion. Republicans would be more pro abortion. No, no, Republicans don't like abortion. Mm. Republicans don't like abortion. Don't like abortion. Democrats, more pro abortion. Mm. Yeah. Wait, more pro Trump choice. doesn't like abortion? Right. Right. This but is doesn't the, Trump like abortion? Right. He yeah, right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, right. Trump right. wants to kill the baby. This, <laughs> this is the. This is the. This is the. Simply right. It seems like he's yeah, probably yeah, had one. Because I've heard a lot of on. people speak against Trump, speaking that he doesn't. <laughs> they, they were speaking for people to have freedom to do whatever they want with their bodies. Mm-hmm. So I'm assuming, yeah, so I'm assuming Republicans are pro abortions and then uh, Democrats pro choice. Whether, you know, to mm. keep the baby or not, it's up to you. It's not like it shouldn't be a law. So, pro, they, yes, pro choice, but, but it would be anti abortion and pro choice. Yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Does it make sense to you, Ghost Lady, Democrats, Republicans? Um, for me, it's my understanding is like the, sa- the same DA, EFF, you know, so. It's between that, you know, the one being pro for the poor, the people, and just about 
you know, being conscious of what does the country need, like obviously getting back the land and so forth. This is in South African understanding. Yeah, context. Yeah, yeah. the context. So it's like, and then you've got the DA, which is obviously more economy and um, just, uh, yeah, basically. Did yeah. you break it down well? Denim? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, yeah, you, you've been in there. Yeah, I, I mean... It's a tough. It's a tough space, right? It's a, I think the. I think government in general. Um, unfortunately, I feel like for me personally, I feel like the answer for a lot of people. I feel like you kind of have to look um, more towards the entrepreneur more than you look towards government for anything. Mm. The Democrats, Republicans, they're all self interest They all have their own self interest and their own things that they want. Oftentimes, yeah, it doesn't really trickle down to the everyday individual. That, Almost, you never. know. Why don't um, you guys have parties like we do? Like we've got A and C. FB. Well, no, I mean, it, it, it's. Well, there's more than two parties, but the other two, the other couple, aren't really. But I think, like everything, it's like you know, at a certain point, for me, I just kind of came to a lot of realization that it's like your options in life and a lot of these things are like you have to just make more money, mm -hmm. right? Like it's like you're they're, they're never sure. going to be able to vote your way into prosperity. Oh, it's never gonna happen. Yeah, and I think yeah, that true, okay. there's a lot that's sold on, if you go and check a box, somehow you're gonna take that and that's gonna turn into your life changing or making it easier. I, you, you have a KPI that says uh, that that's yeah, not true. Yeah, yeah, I think you can like, vote in a difference. In I didn't say life. not. No, I didn't say maybe difference. not like maybe not like a life change. But I'm saying, but, but I'm saying difference. the way that it's sold. Sure. Mm. I'm saying the way that it's sold. Sure. I don't mm. not saying that there's not. I think it, it happens at more of a localized level mm. than it definitely does at the mm. top levels. Mm. I feel like it's more important to know like who the people that are running in your community, like you know the the school boards and things like that, like the localized things, because those are the ones that are on the ground every single day. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's more impactful at that level. Um, because I also think that when you're getting into presidents and things like that, that oftentimes their focus is on so many other things outside of just the country itself, right? There, sure. It's world politics, right? It's currency politics. It's economics. It's trade. It's import. It's export. And they're usually not thinking about the person yeah. that wants a little bit more money on their minimum wage. They're just mm -hmm. not because they've been... Especially in these politics, there's a lot of what we call lifetime politicians, yeah. which is like yeah. you went, entered into as a senator at 18 years old and now you're 78 years old, which means you've never like had to like, if unless you wanted to, you never had to like show for your drive a car. You don't have to go grocery shopping. Yeah, you know, you yeah. have a whole setup. You're so disconnected from reality. Yeah. Right. But those are also the same people that also kind of get in front of you and also try to lecture you and tell you that they understand what you're going through. And it's like, based upon what you do for a living, it's actually impossible for you to know what we're going through. Yeah. Are, right. Are African nations also, is, are they also like, like geritocracies ran by old people? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Just the same. We can't wait for them okay. to die. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, okay. We can't wait for them to die. But it's tough because a lot of the systems, it's a, but like everybody's on a European system. Right. Yeah. right? Like, Which so doesn't it, work it, for it's Africa. So, and it doesn't work. Oh, it's yeah. diabolical yeah. in Africa. Here, it, you know, it's that's what the country was kind of founded on. Africa was not founded on European principles. And so it's far more challenging because a lot of these presidents and these lifetime politicians corrupt are with that European set. So they have a vested interest in keeping that system alive. And Africa is the youngest continent in the world, right? I mean, there's some countries in Africa where the average age is 19 years and younger. Mm. Like that's how young Africa is. Oh, interesting. So they're not interested in watching a 75, 78, 80 year old person to sit there and talk to them about things that they have no idea about. Mm. So it's just a very different kind of topography, right? On the continent you uh, it. than it can be anywhere here. Yeah, well, I've got a question, speaking of politics, and this may be maybe too much expectation on the guy, but did Barack Obama's presidency do anything for black people in any way? Sure. Oh, yeah. Tons of things. I think Barack Obama's presidency did things for black people all over the planet. Wow. Realistically. Nah, come on, not in South Africa. I, 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 I mean, <laughs> I, I think that, because that's a powerful seat. That was a nigga in the, high, in the highest office. Mm. True. Telling, running Most around. Most powerful in the world. Running, yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Like running around militaries, cruise ships, white people. Mm. No, I'm not talking about like I'm talking about like tangible stuff within America, not the aspirational. I mean, he was a great example for us, and the, you know okay. what I mean. But like tangibly, low, like I mean, on the ground for black people, yeah. 
And like I said, maybe it's impossible to have expected that from one man, but I mean, that was an expectation. Obama was president from when I was like 12 to 18, 12 to 20, something like that. Yeah. Um, so like, what did he do? Gay marriage got legalized under Obama. Mm. Um, do, 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 do. He went to war, he bombed a lot of people. I don't know if that's good. <laughs> Obama can't. He's um, Obama after all. Yeah, yeah, Obama. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? What did you say? What did he, what did he say? Oh, he's a bummer. He said he bummed a lot of people, right? Oh, and shame. he got, he got <laughs> Bin Laden as well, right? Right, right. right. But I mean, for black people, so it doesn't sound like he did anything I mean, that moved the needle. I mean, he didn't. I mean, black people. He didn't go and write some legislation for black people specifically. No, he did not do that. But no one would have ex expected him to do that. But it's all a face. I mean, there's no way uh, Joe Biden's running the country right now. Have you seen that guy, bro? Yeah, you know it's all right. a face, Which bro. proves how like the American presidency is like symbolic more than practical. Because there's no way, like you say, he's doing things actively himself. I think yeah. it depends maybe on the administration. Mm. You know, some 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 are probably more active than others. I would say that Joe Biden's was very inactive. Tr Trump's was really really active. Yeah, he's yeah. doing a whole bunch of shit. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think it depends on just like who. I don't know if it's always just like I don't know if it's. I think it's a face. Sure, like it's a. It's this team of a thousand people that mm. make that make up the yeah, decisions. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. But yes. like I think that the, there's someone at the top of the ship. I just think this one's a little slow. Yes, yeah, very slow. A little sleepy. Uh, <laughs> sleepy. Uh, got another question from Rachilla. <laughs> Why do they think Africa is full of starving children? Corey, you've never been to Africa, so I'll let you answer that one. Okay. Um, I haven't been to Africa. I really want to go. Mm -hmm. um, why do they think that? Because, it's again, it's about representation, what you see. So, like, if you go by, like, the African representation in American media, it is starving kids with their rib cages showing. You would assume that people don't have, that there's no skyscrapers. So that's you would all they show you? Literally. Wow. There's I now I don't have cable, yeah, yeah, yeah. but every all yeah, that's pretty much all so they show this you. Day, I thought this was used to be like Yeah, because it's social media now, bro. Like, no, the, the the it was it, it's the, the it. We get it, it's empty. Not to bang it on the I table. Fall from an empty yeah. cup. <laughs> In America, it's like it's like it was it's like it's like slave movies, the kids with the with the with the rib cages and Wakanda. That's it. That's it. So at school, Damn. they don't tell you about like what's going on in Africa, like no shit, bro. That's Not even crazy. kinda. The only time Africa, the only time Africa pops up in like the news is or like it's war torn. Yo, it's like Baghdad. You, that's like that's like the that's like the American media representation. So when you see like a Tyler Black Coffee, Trevor Noah, like are you like? Where I mean, they come from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which Africa are they from? I'm just like curious. Because they look fed. Oh, my God. Where's the ribs? Where's the ribs? Where's the ribs? Where's the fucking ribs? If you're African. Prove it. Oh, I mean, they. It's, it's funny because you, you, that's that's a great question. Because, yeah. yeah. you know, and like as a black person, as an educated black person, I'm aware that this is not. What, what I see is not what I'm getting. Of course. It's not what I see is not, yeah. what, what, I see is not what is. But yeah, then that's a great, that's a, that's a good question to people who think that it's all starving children. It's yeah. just, it's, a, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's great, it's great marketing, right? Yeah. Um, but the reality of it is if you, so there's a, a guy, his name was Willie Lynch. Um, he was famous, was, I think it was Willie Lynch wrote his letters in 1618, I think it was, maybe. Don't quote me, it was somewhere. Willie Lynch was a famous slave master. Okay. Right. And there's the letters. Everyone can go and look up the letters of Willie Lynch. And Willie Lynch essentially wrote a letter of how you combat and break the black man and the black woman. Okay. okay. They're called the Willie Lynch letters. They brought him from the islands. Um, he had a very popular slave plantation. They brought him over to the United States because the slave masters are like, these black people, these Africans are over here tearing us up. And we don't know how to get them under control. What do we do? So he was known them? as the person to break the black man, to break, to break the Bantu. So they bring him over and essentially he writes this dissertation about how you break them. And one of the first ways that you break them is you take them off of the land, right? So take them off of something that's familiar from them yep. and you cut them from their language, yeah. right? Ooh. So once you take them away from their land that's foreign, then you cut their language. So now they have no semblance 
of where they come from. Now, that's not going to happen in the first generation, but it will start to happen in the second and the third generation. So the time we get to the fourth generation, you have no ideological understanding of where you even come from, yeah. language, culture, tradition, happened, history, yeah. nothing. It's all gone. The fascinating thing, and he talked about how you pit the man, the black man against the black woman, uh, how, and that, how that's going to change the psychology. For an example, that what you're going to do is you take the strongest black man, you kill them in front of all the other black men, yeah. right? And that ah. will then de-incentivize the other black men from wanting to stand up because the women will be afraid that that's going to happen to their men. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is that then the slave master then comes and gives the woman money. And so after a while, the woman will start to look at the slave master as somebody that's protecting her. Oh, so then she man. will start to change the way that she views her slave own man master. because of the slave masters. You almost look at the slave master as like the state or government. Yeah. Okay, but the most fascinating thing about this was what they said was, but what you have to be very careful of is that you can never give them anything that reminds them of home because the brain has a very magical ability to reset itself if it can ever touch something that reminds them. Hmm. So because it's in our DNA, right, already of where we come from, that if you were to ever give somebody a feeling, a touch, a fabric, everything in your body essentially would reset itself. Jeez. So you don't really remember, you re-remember, mm. right? You don't really learn anything, you're just re-remembering something. Wow, bro. So I personally believe that the, mar the reason for that marketing is because if you were to start to get more African Americans with $2.2 .2 trillion worth of purchasing power, right, larger than the entire GDP of the continent, and European Africans and Caribbeans that are now going down, back to the continent, because there's 54 countries in the freaking, you know, yeah. on the continent. You'll find a country that fits for you. Right? Yes. It might not be South Africa, it may not be Botswana, yeah. right? But, but it could be Burundi, Congo, Ghana, Ghana Nigeria. It could, you know, there's so many yep. you get. San Tome, Mauritius. But I believe that if you were to go back and see something, smell, taste, feel, ground yourself, that your body would reset. Oh, and I personally believe on more of a spiritual level that they just want to make sure that, that never happens because we make too much money here, we're the culture setters of the entire yeah. world. Yeah, and bro. what could you do if you now no longer have the culture setters of the world? Oh what, who is pushing God. the trends around the, oh around the world? That's why people want to come to the United States, because they want to be like the Michael Jordans, the Kobe Bryants, the LeBron Jameses, the Jay-Zs, Jay the Kanye Beyonce. West, the Alicia Keys, the Beyonce's, the Rihanna's. Those are the people that they want to be like. But imagine if those people Yes, yes. Elon Musk, the, 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 the fucking Musk. So you come back and you see that's the opportunity. So for me, at a visceral level, I believe that's the reason why you're you're cornered there. They would rather have you fly over the continent to go to Dubai, to go fly over the continent before you're ever even thinking about maybe I should land there hmm. and see something. Jeez, man, fucking wow, hell. Man. Yes, yes. I nailed it, bro. Yo, 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 yo. No? Actually, um. Add, like just a question that I had. Um, so what I've observed with the American culture, and um, you see when in SA or even Africa as a whole, people have traditions. So you mm. know like, okay, you're from this tribe. Mm. Or, you know, this, this is how we do, this things. Is how we do mm. things. And there's, there's, there's this thing of like just general tradition and knowing mm. where you come from. Mm. Like if you're pregnant, you can't say it for... Yeah, for, for a period of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So <laughs> your friends will just see you... That one, you know. Like, I love all, I, Out of I all the traditions... Out of all the traditions that he could have picked, that was like the one that you're like... For an example. Just, just <laughs> for those that are listening at home. Just an yeah. example. So, 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 what I'm looking at here in America, and I just want to ask you guys, is this... Has the strip club... Cal culture become Whoa. like normal tradition because it seems like I, what I'm viewing from the black community is that it's just the, the twerking culture and mm. you know it's, it's, it's replicated whether it's just it's moved from just being like something that's private in the strip club mm. but now it's, it's a social it's how mm. people like Interact. have fun and mm. that's, that's it I was well, crazy that, bro at the beach it was yesterday they had five foils twerking and performing Oh, the, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was dude. Yeah, that was like, oh, hey, man. Oh. And also, oh. it was so strange, Jeez. man. Like, Is okay, there a lack of tradition it and just... So, so there's, there's a two load, there's like a two-piece question. Is okay. there a lack of tradition? Yes, mm -hmm. because everyone comes over on slave ships. Uh, as we just had mm. our lesson, uh, things are... Um, 
you you lose your history. Yes. So then yes. there is a but there is an American there is a Black American history yes. that is about yeah. four hundred years old, okay. four hundred fifty years old or so that has traditions in it. Then we talk about representation again. Mm. So like that's the representation that you're seeing of American culture. Mm. Just like how we're getting the the the, the starving this, African uh, kids, yes. you're getting yeah. the strip club. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The black people, the, the, yeah. the, 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 you don't get the suburban black you're family. Bit, like there's the yeah, father there's, and mother, right. solid there's, there's, nuclear there's, there's family. There's black yeah. lawyers. There's black NASA. Yeah. There's yeah. black yeah. astronauts. Yeah, those are all. Those, these are all a thing. Everyone is in a drug dealer. Se- sexualization, rapper, sexualization, uh, yes. Or sexualization sells. Like so, that's it's a low. It's a low. So in the system as well. We the system. Yeah. Sexualization sells. It's a low hanging fruit that nobody has to think about, and that's how you make money, right? It's again, it's that's just what they do, you know. But I, like you said, there's definitely there's, I mean, there's very successful, affluent lawyers and people on Wall Street and bankers and things of that. But there's not that doesn't have any sex appeal, mm. you know. And again, you have to look at the way that the world has been built. It's been it's built for like an online presence, yeah. right? This bubble eventually will pop, and I think it will reset itself in some variation that will split somewhere in the middle. But I think that that's it's a very intentional reason for that type of representation um, because sexualization within. The black community in general has always been very, very uh, profitable for a lot of people, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Want black. Um, and, you know, and I think that that also becomes an easy entry point for a lot of people because it's like, okay, if that's what I have to do to maybe be successful, let me just go and do that. Yeah. Right? And so I think it's just hard because I think, like you said, like there is, our, we have the own African-American can, type of history, history, but a lot of it was built off of ideals and understandings that were not from people that look like us, mm. right? Like those were like, hey, this is what you do now. Yes. And it's like, but it was never based on anything. It was what they did. Mm. And so we adopted them. And then we're trying to find, and I think that's where it kind of is right now. Like you say, like the black community, the question that I would ask is like, what is the black community? Mm. Like when you're saying the black community, I say like point to me, like if you say like what Hollywood, you can point to Hollywood. You can, yes. you, you know yeah. what it is. Yeah. yeah. When you're looking at the black community, I think that's the hard part. You're like, what is the black community? When you're saying the black community, is it twerking, mm. right? Is that what the black community is? Mm. Is it the basketball players? Is it the athlete? Is it, is the, it the hood? It, you know, is it the, is it the hood? Is it, is it soul food? Is, you yeah. know what I mean? Is it the banker? Is it the astronaut? So I think it's those types of things that it's like, it's still trying to figure out what it is. It's still very, very new. And I think that you're now kind of seeing a different change. And it's disparate. America is big. Mm. Black people in the floor, in the, in like middle of Florida yeah. have a very specific culture that is very different from niggas from Philly. Damn. Than from niggas from yeah. LA. New yeah. York. Yeah. New York. Like these are all different. Man, uh, Corey, thank you so much for your time, man. Thanks for having me. Thank, thank you so much thank for your time. This, well, is, this is so, so dope. beautiful, man. Yeah. 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 So, I don't I, know if you got so um, I, um, I, any I, last I, questions I, before we wrap it up, go Slaney. Nah. Paduka. I think, um, for instance, okay, when we talk about just how, obviously, you have the Africans, mm-hmm. us the Africans who have misconceptions about the Americans, like, you know, this conversation was good. The same thing with the Americans having their misconceptions about Africans. Right. So, um, I think maybe a solution is using social media to actually, like, just Bridge follow the gap. people. Bridge the yeah. Gap. yeah, follow people, maybe influences. In Africa, just right. to see Africa for what it is, instead of whatever that's perpetuated by that you see on TV and mm-hmm. just starving kids, and that's all. So I think, I, I think already as like Africans, we view like America and already copy what's happening this side. But I think maybe it's also like just imploring like Ameri- Americans to actually like dig deeper and find people to follow and just... Ah, it's going to yeah. take generations, bro. Well, I think it's just, uh, a, long time, it's just a, We it's, won't be alive It's just an that, interest, bro. right? I think, like, I think you, yeah. you... I think right now, to not be informed about Africa in any way... I mean, it's, there's people that still think that Africa is a country, no. yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, with social media, with the people that know things that are so far beyond like in other people's families, but they don't know five countries in Africa, yeah. right? It's less about the not having access and more of the desire because I think everybody, it feels like worldwide is trying to like survive and thrive 
And I think they're trying to figure out like, how is it going to be profitable for me? And I think that, mm. yes, there's going to be iterations of certain people. You talked about it before, how there's a lot of, a lot more African-Americans that yeah, are moving yeah. to Africa, yeah. but that's because there was a genuine interest. Desire. They, they yes. sought for information. Mm. They were seeking it out. They were going online. They were YouTubing, they were Googling. They were, they were doing, there was a true, and then they bought a plane ticket, exactly. right? Mm. So it's like the difference of saying they're going like, oh, it's so expensive to go to Africa. I'm like, it's the same expense that it would take for you to go and get brand new Jordans in a jersey as it is to buy a plane ticket to Africa. Exactly. Trust me, I know. Right. Oh, Obviously, when we're talking from the, the Africa side to come over to South Africa to try to get a visa to come to the U.S., <laughs> it's absurdity. It's, right? like, it's, it's like, you know what I mean? It's like, it's ridiculous. But I think that if you want to have the access to information, the information is available. Yeah. But I do think that we're starting to see iterations of that. But yes, I think, like you said, it's a generational thing. Yeah. You know? and I think that we're not gonna take a while, we just bro. have to be patient with wow. that process. But it is, you know, we are where we are. And I think we're. We're, we're in a good step because we have the number one podcast in Africa mm. here having a conversation saying like, hey, we're going to do it. Yeah. And we're going to ask the questions and we're going to be here. We're going to invest in that. And maybe there might be one or two children that sit there and go, I want to do that and mm. do that. And if that's something that works and builds a family and opens up an economy, then that's a win. Mm. You know, you can't have it, everything. Bro. For me, it's how the white person, I don't even see it as African and American, whatever. No. For me, I see it as how they were able to divide like, mm. and conquer a whole like, yeah. black people. You know what yeah. I mean? Because right. if you look at it, right? So let's be honest. I mean, uh, African-Americans look down on Africans, right? Mm. And then when you get into Africa, <laughs> Then you have South Africans who look down on other Africans, mm -hmm. right? And then you on get, other South Africans even. And then you get into yeah. South Africa. Then and then have, they want to be different country in <laughs> South Africa. South Africa wants to split itself as then one Then you have area Zulus others, who look down on vendors. Like you know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. It's just like a whole divide. Tribalism. 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 Rich blacks look down on poor blacks. It's tribalism. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. It's from the same tribe. It's yeah. tri but, the, but the reality of it is, it's is like that's, the it's called, so there's the, the Bantu proverb that when two brothers fight, a stranger inherits the land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can Continuously, as long as you can continuously find these small things, right, to always be divided. That's the old. That's how you do it. And that's a right? good one. When you, two brothers you, fight, a stranger inherits that's the land. That's a bunch of great words. He's like, I'll have some of that. I'll have some and, of and that. And that's the thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Like if you look at it and you sit there and go, okay, oh, this person, you do spoons and you do forks. Why would you guys trade together? You could just kill them and you could have spoons and, and forks. Folks. Yeah. And they don't have anything. It's like, oh, that's a great idea. And here's weaponry to do it. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. and so it's like, that's how it is. So I think it's, it's a generational thing because I believe that it's going to take very tactful individuals yeah. Um, yeah, that bro. can do it much better than they are saying that they're going to do it because action matters. And I think, especially on the continent, as well as the African American community, we need to have more actionable things that are happening. I think we've done a lot of talking. Mm. I think talking is great, it's entertaining, it's exciting. But then once you're done talking, you have to go do the action. Yeah. And I think yeah. that this next generation of children are going to be the ones that are going to be mm -hmm. holding us accountable mm -hmm. because they have the access to the information Amazing. that says, hey, I remember when you did that podcast and you said you were going to do that. Boom, 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 and now boom. two years later, this is where, this is where you said this is it. What you Whereas did. when our parents were alive, there wasn't any of that. Mm. Right. So I think there's a different level of accountability that mm -hmm. I believe is going to happen. So I think the next couple of generations, I think this is what it's on. But I believe that we're kind of the forefathers uh, of what that next generation is going to be, specifically on the continent. What was oh, that white beautiful. guy? That white guy fucked us up, man. That guy's so much. No, 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 not Willie Lynch. You mean Lynch. In, 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 oh, Willie Lynch is here, in, yeah, in oh, the that, U.S., Willie Lynch. Yeah, Willie Lynch. I will look, look at the Willie Lynch letters. The letters, yes. yeah. Yes. Well, when they I say know someone got lynched, is that where it yeah. comes from? Like, yes, when they hang that's, someone? Yeah, they named yeah. it after yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah lynching on a because TV. Because one of the first, one the first things that he said when he got to the U.S., when he saw black bodies hanging from the thing is he was lauding the fact that there was bodies, but he was like, you were wasting good crop, right? <sighs> so he's like, all these bodies hanging from trees. And he's oh, like, because wow. you have to remember, uh, our lynchings fuck. used to be uh, like, they would send postcards out to people. They would be on a postcard. Yeah. Like, hey, Johnny, such and such was just here and da 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 And they would be on a picture of some, a, a black, black man, man hanging, hanging the, in the on, back. On, oh, Everyone taking shit. selfies. Right, like with the with the black man hanging in the back, yeah, mm -hmm. with his with his private parts cut off and shoved in his mouth. Whoa! Right? So man, you have to understand. Hell, so there's this bro. iteration. It just is what it is, you know. And I think that the problem is is that we try to kind of play off on some of the psychological nature yeah. of what that does. But the same thing in Africa. Yeah. Right? When you're looking at other things, if you look at what was happening during the apartheid, apartheid yes. in, in all these other areas, I mean, hell, look at what happened in Congo. Right, right? now. You right had, now. 20, 20, Bro. 25 million Congolese men, women, and children under King Leopold that were murdered 
and they never call it a genocide. Mm. 20, 25, right. look at what's happening right now in Congo, All right. right? But so it's these types of things, and I think even in Africa, you know, it's like what's happening in Africa right now, South Africa and Zimbabwe, mm. and what that whole culture clash is, and this, that, and third, it's like, I feel like it's entertaining to a certain degree because it's, you know, sometimes, but it's really a detriment yeah. to what we're trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. And I just don't believe that we're ever going to get to where we want to if that's what we're going to be focused on. Oh, man. So, mm. yeah, we have some ways. Yeah. but I, nah, I, sure. I think next time you're in L.A., real not in L.A., in stateside, go to D.C. and go to the African American History Museum. Okay. okay. It's really, really cool. And it goes from, like, the slave ships and where they came from wow. and wow, comes up bro. and through. Like, it's, like, maybe, like, eight... St- Eight Still levels or so, yeah, yeah. and like you know, and it takes you through the history, and it goes from like the slave ships through like you know the plantations through like no way. the Jeez. undergrounds and all that Jim yeah. Crow up to like Beyonce and Rihanna and Barack mm. up at the top, and it's a really cool, it's a really cool experience. Yeah, that I yeah. think so come uh, back. we'll check. Yes, out. come yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah. We come back. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys. Appreciate yeah. it. All right, thank cool you, man. We're out of here. Podcast and chill. Hey. Bye. Bye. Yo, thank you. Yeah, Perfect. No Welcome to Black Excellence. Do not fear, for if you do, just sip on some grandeur. And if you still do, ask ourselves, what would Mapapunzi do? Parama chilla, itlesha lefiki. Bungo yig, even when they ask you, how sabi do not fear. For if you do, just say, Anistivi. This is the medicine of censorship. This is the pill. Which one is that one? Podcast and chill.